cybersecurity uh, ranges from the different activities that occur on the internet, um, whether it's political activism, like a WikiLeaks that's looking for transparency of data, or people who are looking to assemble um, and protest against their governments in the streets using Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, so political activism would be the first way I think about cybersecurity. The second is organized crime, those who are the modern day bank robbers who are trying to steal our money out of our banks. The third area is intellectual property theft, which is uh, illegally copying the next generation designs and or intentions of our corporations um, in order to facilitate economic growth in another region of the world. The fourth area would be uh, espionage, really uh, attacking the um, and or stealing information out of our government systems that is specific to our government's plans and intentions. And then the final area is uh, destruction of property. And while that is uncommon, we're seeing that happen more around the world. So when we think about cybersecurity, I think about all of the different policy activities, legislative activities, um, and other activities that have to address those six areas of um, cyber operations. In the last decade, cybersecurity has really uh, matured as a conversation and all nations around the world are beginning to develop cybersecurity strategies, develop cyber uh, capabilities, and are beginning to address it in the International Policy Forum. What does that do as a cybersecurity yeah. expert? Well, I, um, how do I maintain currency uh, is I read a lot and I have uh, uh, news feeds that come from all over the world on what's going on in cybersecurity. I spend a lot of time um, actually uh, traveling and meeting with other companies and governments to understand what they're doing and what are the best practices because I find that countries around the world have different approaches and some of their approaches are quite unique that we could learn from. Well, the basic rule for social media platform in my mind is if you don't want somebody to know anything about it, then don't ever post it because once you post it, it's forever going to be on the internet. Um, and there's a really amazing game, that uh, online game that was published in an online in um, the United Kingdom, available to anybody around the world. It's called Smokescreen, and uh, it's an online uh, game that uh, walks you through different scenarios of what it means to post the data on the in a in a social network, and what are the consequences if somebody uh, uses it inappropriately. Uh, and I, I certainly recommend it to anybody who has teenagers um, and wants to understand the, the, the true nature of uh, the social media environment for their kids. I think the basic steps that one needs to think about as they're using these devices is what are the automatic settings that the device is set to? And then how do you go into the device and uh, turn off uh, location aware if you don't want somebody to track where you're going on a day to day, your pattern of life? Turn off um, the record button so it doesn't actually uh, store all of your searches on Google or Bing. Um, and uh, just know how it's set up for the automatic sharing of data with the primary provider or to the applications that you've downloaded to your device. If you do that, then you're taking some of the basic protections um, for using uh, and being able to continue to use without, uh, without real concern. You're bringing your own device to everyday life. Um, the data in the cloud really needs to be uh, looked at as what is the service level agreement that you've signed with the iCloud or wherever the cloud is that you're storing your data. If it's personal data, it really needs to be secure, then you need to make sure that uh, the contract or the agreement that you've signed with your service provider is going to keep it secure and that they're going to notify you if there's a problem. Mm -hmm.